Welcome to the Tony Awesome Fishing Show. In this episode, I'm going to be telling you guys all my secrets again on tips for downtide fishing. I'm going to be using things like this booms. You can buy them from the shop or you can make your own, which I do, out of co hangers. You can find out more about this on our how to section here. But also, throw that one away. You can also watch, if you want and you love the outdoors, Mike's Totally Awesome Outdoor Show. It's got DIY, it's got things like rabbit skinning, pheasant shooting, and also bushcraft. If you like bushcraft, just check it out. It's really good. It's a bit of fun. We're enjoying filming it. Let's get out on the boat. It's high, well, it's high Sea Drifter, the world's most famous fishing boat, and it's yellow. Let's see if this guy actually can catch anything. Okay, so here we go. Imagine you could be on a private boat. Imagine you're on a charter boat. There is your bait, your trace, and there's the boom we talked about. You can see it makes that shape there. When you lower it down, this doesn't tangle around the main line, or shouldn't do if you don't lay it down too fast. So imagine there's other anglers on the boat here. You're on a charter boat, and you're at the top end. If you're at the top end, you can see you've got a really heavy lead there. Now, listen, you have to ask a skipper on the day who you're fishing with, what size lead he'll help you out he'll tell you he knows exactly the last thing he wants is tangles he wants people to catch fish go home happy go home happy bunnies and you know that's the way it is so he's going to be there to help you so a heavy lead i'm at the front of the boat there's some imaginary guys here my imaginary friends we call them just down here i don't want to tangle in them so i've got the heavy lead i just lower the trace over the side like this just the bait hits the water, the tide, which is like a river of current, straightens it all out, the boom's hanging like that, and then I just start to lower it down. I've got it out of gear. It could be a star drag with a single you know, lever, or it could be a lever drag. Either way, it's in free spool. Let's say free spool look like this, okay? I'm going to let it go down, nice and smooth like this, nice and smooth, until you feel it hit the bottom. Now, if you watch the tip, when it's going down, you must keep in contact with it, as that spool is revolving like that, so that you can feel it hit the bottom. Let it go down at a constant speed like this. Just hit the bottom. Now, I, I've still got it out of gear. I've got my thumb locked on it. I'm going to sweep the rod up here like this. This levers the lead off the bottom. The tide swings it up. Imagine it's like a bow in the line like this. It leaves it off the bottom, and I'm going to spool it back and lower the rod top at the same time. So I free spool here. Bump. I felt the lead hit. I lock it up, I let the lead and the line sit on the seabed. The water pressure from the, from, from the current, you know, like a river, as I just wrote it, imagine it's like a river pushing against that line like this. We'll, we'll want to swing the lead up, and it will swing the lead up. So I sweep it up again, free spool, let it run, bump. I felt the lead hit. Now, you do this until you get it so far back as I mentioned earlier, that you're doing this with it from the side on. It's going up bump, up bump, up bump, up bump. You're just levering it back all the time. It's called bumping down tie. Now eventually, that angle on the line, I'm just going to do this with it. Instead of being, imagine this is the line, it's going to be back like this. The current is pushing against this, but sliding down it, if you can imagine. Instead of being like this and pushing against it vertically the line, it's it's sort of sliding down it so the further you get it back bumping bear in mind you can only go so far with a heavy lead the better and eventually you'll be doing this it won't bump anymore free spool barely bumps barely bumps so that's the limit where that lead in particular that particular weight of lead is happy it sits it's way back there at an angle it's out of everybody else's way i'm up this end try to imagine it at this end although the line's back there because the guys way down the stern there are using lighter leads they're even further back there. so we're staggered we're all staggered down there i'll give you one more bump then i go free spool let it go down bang I feel it hit and then i can lock up the drag put it in gear whichever wheel you use and just tuck it under my arm and I can hold it. If you want to put it down, put it down. Make sure you put a lanyard or a clip on it so it doesn't go over the side. Um, you know, a lot of the time you can rest it. A lot of the charter boats will have little V notches along rails where you can rest your rod. And my advice is put a little tie on it as well, just in case it goes over.
guys, this is the sort of fishing you can get when the down tide really does go well. This one, that's good. All the other side. This one's good fish. I can see now. This is a really nice ray. I guess it's the back. Oh, the bite on the other one's still going. It's wrapped up. No, it's, a, it's a beautiful undulate ray. You want to see this one underwater? Lovely colours in it. And they're a typical species that you can get down tide fishing. It's twisted up in the tide, which is really pulling hard on the flood tide now. And of course, it's that tide that helps keep everything straight and on the bottom. And that's when you should get the best of the fishing. I'm going to try and lift this one in for you. Come on, boy. Oh, look at this one, people. Look at this one. That is a nice, big, undulate ray. What a super fish. And look what he's taken. A whole mackerel. Keep away from those jaws. I think, as you can see those grinding teeth there, I think they extend more on this type of species of ray. This undulate particular are notorious of being. I think there's another fish on that rod. Can you guys strike that for me? <laughs> I can't do two at once. That's a, that's a male. I guess it goes about 10, 11 pounds. Just pop the hook out. Hopefully. Wonder what is on the other one. Here's the, here's the hook, 6-0, eagle claw, and sure we'll see. Let's get this one back, guys. Because I want to see what's on the other one. When you move, you move with desire. It crushes me, sending me higher. Okay now this lead, same shape. It's about half a pound. So I've got a pound and a half on this one. And this one is just over it's about a pound, pound and a quarter. Same running boom there, bead, swivel, trace this time. A squid that's been elasticated on with our bait elastic. And that's important in a strong tide to keep it nice and straight like that, as you can see. Absolutely nice and straight with the elastic, keeps it in one line. It doesn't spin, you do not want to bait the spinning. The same thing, so there's a guy out here, a guy here. Look, they're all imaginary. There's a guy here, a guy here. I don't like that guy anyway. One here, and I'm off the stern of the boat. I just drop my bait over the side. I let the current pull the trace straight so that that boom is pointing in that direction. Out of gear, and I lower it down. And this particular one is braid, so I'm definitely going to feel the lead hit the bottom. Nice even speed that it goes down at, so you do not go too fast so it twists up, but fast enough that you want to be able to hit the bottom and feel it. There, bang, you hit the bottom. Now this, because it's a finer diameter, has less water pressure on it, so and less stretch, so therefore it will cut through the water better, and with less stretch I'll be able to feel that leg hit the seabed each time I want to bounce it back down tight. I lift it, go to free spool here, and then let it, let it sort of fly back in the current. As soon as it hits, I'll oh know. Put the rod back, sweeping the lead up. There we go, free spool. Bang, I can feel the lead hit through the tip. You'll actually feel it. Now when you get it out there a long way, and sometimes you might get it maybe 80 yards, 80 or 100 yards away, you might have to hold the rod like this, sweep it right back, free spool, and let it go fast and it hits, bang. It's a millisecond that hits, but you have to be sure that you're on the on the seabed. Otherwise, all you're doing, the current just swings it up and you're holding it like this. All it's done is swung the lead right up, up, up high in the water, and all the, all the sea fish in the world down here don't know it's up there, and you'll catch nothing. It's got to be on the bed, on the seabed. Out of gear, thumb on the spool, lift. Spool it back, bang. Now each time, the further it goes back, you're, you're reducing that steep angle with the line. It's doing this, okay? It's gonna go less and less and less. And you'll know when that lead is getting at the right angle, when the, when the water is going down the line rather than against it, because you'll be spooling back by less line each time. Just about to do it, I thought I had a bump then. 
lift, free spool, bang. Just take up that bit of slack, I pause, let the water pressure build up on the line again, and just repeat the procedure. Already, because this is braid, I'm doing less and less bumping down tide. Just half a dozen turns of the spool each time. This braid is about 40 pounds. I do not like a thin braid whatsoever. It's a nightmare to work with. It. Um, well, you don't untangle it, you just attack it with a pair of scissors or a knife. At least with this thick braid, you've got half a chance. I'm nearly at the limit now. And this could change, obviously, you've got to remember, if the tide's increasing, you're going to have to do this more and more, but as it decreases, your next drop down, if the tide's starting to slack off, you know, you, you won't need to do it so much. Your lead will be closer to the boat. Don't ever be worried about how far back you're bumping it. I've caught fish way, way, almost, when the line's almost flat. Several times I've been on charter boats and the skipper said, you won't catch anything back there, mate. And, okay. <laughs> I'll just wind this fish out of the way then. There we go, that's the limit. I put the drag up, I put the clicker on. And another pointer is, don't keep the ratchet, you know, the, the clicker, we're going to call it the ratchet, the clicker, the audible sound on, with your drag too light, because you might, if you don't have that ratchet on, you might not hear it, and it might be ticking out, ticking out, ticking out, with water pressure on the line. So, put the little clicker on, you can hear that. If it's doing that, all the time with the tide, pop up the drag a bit more. If you've got a star drag, do up the wheel on the side, a little bit tighter. One more for luck. That's it, that's done. And the other thing is, if the other thing is to fall over, the other thing is, as the tide reduces, don't forget, everybody can use less weight. The guy with a pound and a half up the front of the boat up here, these, these two guys, they can drop to a pound but in, in, the same thing applies back here. They need to reduce theirs as well. Otherwise, the, you've got the same principle. Everybody with a pound lead is going to cluster at the back and spin up, and it's going to be a nightmare. You need to have heavy rods at the front for down tiding, medium weight, and off the stern. Those are the guys that should be using the lightest weight. The only one can get away with a heavy weight is the guy in the middle who's in line with the anchor rope, and nobody from the side is going to run their traces, their terminal gear, into his. He's pretty safe in the centre of the boat. Nice place to be. We can't always get it, can we? Well, I can. But I'll put a sharp one there. This we call casual fishing. I'm just taking it for granted that that fish is hooked on the other side. Got to move my rod out the way now. Get into Clusterville. And I'll try and leave these others out if I can. If all possible. Okay. The only benefit you've got of fishing around like I do, plenty of deck space, plenty of space there to put more rods out and get in even bigger tangles. Let's check this one out. I'll switch this round for you. Hopefully it won't go over the side. There was a fish absolutely handy. There's a drop. No, there's something there. There is something there. I wonder if it's a twin of that under. Big pieces of weed out here going past, but be careful with the extra pressure on the line. Whoa, kicking, kicking, kicking. Big time kick. And I've got my And I've got my my bonus shotgun, 50 wide down the middle of the pressure shark line. Jump bag out back there, or in here, floats back there. Oh, come on, man. That's a weird hitch out there. That did not feel like a rain. The tide just started to flood, and as soon as that flood set in, bang, bang, two bites on the down tide rod. And I'm not even, oh, I'm not even bothered with an up tide. I don't like those head shakes like that. I'm on braid, they can often tear a hook out. It's a light hook hole. 
not really a lover of fighting fish or prey. Had a few big ones on the giant sturgeon, two or three hundred pounds, like 100, 125 pound braid. Not this fish, man. It's gripping it. And the benefit of downtime fishing, you don't know what you're going to catch next. It is. Oh, oh, it's only a conger eel. I'm going to see if I can just lift this one in on the trace. Definitely eating it. On through the trace, you just have to take my word that there's a fish here. Here he comes, here he comes, here he comes. I wonder, upside down, do they go into tonic immobility like on our other films? Turn it around, you can see the jaws there. And there we go. You see that big, big crushing head there. Now, if that grabbed a finger, started spinning, there's every chance it would take your finger off. Even one this side, which is about, I don't know, 12, 14 pounds, something like that. Nice conga. Two fish to down tide. Way to go. There we go. One conga, back over the side. What else will the day bring? Where you go, buddy? I'll give you a tip. Fishing alone on a small boat, guys, make sure you just use a rag and wipe that conga slime off the deck. You don't want to go over. And it is yucky stuff. This must be a pretty big fish. It's just going to show you the one down the centre can often pick off a bigger fish because you've got your own smell trail going down there. The smell trail off the other guys, there might be six or eight guys in a charter boat. This is a real good fish. Six or eight guys in a charter boat and they're all going to compete with your bait. This way the one in the middle is on his own and isolated. You've got to see what this fish is. It's weird. Holy cow, it's a really big smooth now. Oh my god, he's just hanging there. Round the oh. Hang on people. So guys, hope you enjoyed it. Totally awesome fishing show, plenty of fishing tips. Gonna get this guy back. Beautiful undulate ray, a nice conger eel, and finish off with a really big smooth hound. Looks like he wants to go about maybe 12 pounds.